So uh, evening, I was just going to make this uh, first part kind of brief, but uh, I wanted us all just to say who we are. So my name is Slee Stack, and uh, I like to mess with stuff a lot. <laughs> Anyways, I'm a little incoherent, so bear with me a little bit. I haven't slept for three days or something like that. But uh, we do have a project happening on the mezzanine level. It's uh, if you get on stairs or up the escalator, um, depending upon which way you go. Yeah, we're, we're going to be here all weekend. Um, basically, you go past a security booth, take a right, and we're down there. But uh, come on down and make free phone calls all over the planet and uh, do some other fun things. And we're going to add features um, literally every day throughout the conference so nobody gets bored with it. Anyhow, um, my background's basic. Uh, I like to mess with things. I uh, started messing with computers in 1980. Um, done bits and pieces of this, that, and the other in mechanical and optical and uh, hardware, software design. And this is my cool project sidekick thing. So, hey. Next. How you doing? I'm Beeve. Uh, me and Sleestack actually started Telefreak. And what year was it? I don't even remember now. It's uh, 2003. And basically it was kind of a, never really meant to be a, a club or anything like that. It just sort of kind of ended up that way. And we all kind of started teaming together on different projects, writing software together, like GIDs, different panels, and I wrote like iWar and stuff like that for, and we'd, you know, do lots of war dialing and strange stuff. But uh, um, anyway, so we originally started out as kind of a free voicemail, anonymous voicemail kind of system that, you know, people could use being if you're a drug dealer or whatever who knows who's what people use it for nowadays but uh so people could get on there and you know set up free voicemail accounts and use it anonymously and not worry about any kind of logging or anything because we don't enable any kind of logging and uh then it kind of starts expanding out into conferences and we started inviting a lot of people to call in from pretty much all over the world so that uh we could all discuss like projects about asterisk um any kind of general hacking kind of stuff, bone freaking, whatever that we felt cooking. like. Cooking. Cooking was a big one. So. Yeah, actually, we met wasn't, on the, wasn't met on the, the uh, original sorry, inception to be uh, something about robots having sex, if I remember. Yeah, recall. no, it was. Yeah, yeah. originally it was going to be uh, pretty much a line that you called yeah. where uh, you got some text-to-speech back, and it yeah. was kind of like this Tele weird... Telephone. Yeah, an interesting, an interesting Easter egg on the Telefreak PBX, if anyone's interested. Is, yeah, it's still uh, there, isn't it? Yeah. You can dial 69 as a, uh, east he as a hidden Easter egg. Well, on it's that. not hidden anymore. <laughs> No, it was, no, but yeah. uh, thanks a lot. Well, that kind of happens occasionally, you know. Well, not as a shameless plug or anything, but uh, I met Beeve through the Death Row Cluster. I don't know if you guys know what that is. Anybody know what that is? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Hell yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, it's, it's an awesome thing because actually there aren't that many open VMS systems that you can mess with that are uh, out there. And by the way, open VMS doesn't have any random number generator. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that, but... Anyhow, I like messing with it a lot, and uh, Beeve runs a place. He owns a place, actually. Right. And he started that a long and time ago. We pretty ago. much met through that, and then you yeah, we started got bringing fight. up telephone stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah we got in a fight on the nerd, nerd system. Right. Yeah. Nerd fight. Yeah. It's a little skirmish, you know? Yeah. Anyhow, we like to uh, hang out on the telco channel there um, in the notes system, which is uh, essentially a text BBS for the most BBS. part. Yeah. And uh, it's internal to the open VMS cluster there. Um, but uh, we used to hang out in Telco and talk about this, that, and the other. And uh, we had uh, another friend named Robot who was like, hey, man, this uh, asterisk thing is pretty cool. You know, this is about 2003 or so. And so we started messing with it. And, uh, found and this it was when it was really incredibly buggy software. Brands. But then kinda, again. Kind of still is. That was but just about yeah. the same. Yeah. That's all right. I love it. Yeah. When did that change? Yeah. It's, it's always in beta, but it's cool. It. You know, so is Microsoft Windows. So yeah. no, no <laughs> nice. comparison there. But. Anyhow, uh, we uh, took on Astra as just something interesting to look into, and it turned out that it would do all kinds of things that we had always wanted to do as kids that we would have gotten thrown in jail as kids for doing. Actually, ironically, uh, the only reason I started using it was I couldn't get my, uh, my SIP phone to work, and I had a choice between SIP proxy or Asterisk to use it, and I, of course, picked the much more complex one to set up and get it working. So. Well, that's generally how you do that. When you yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, let's introduce everybody else. I mean, All let's right. go down the line, man. I guess it'd be my turn. For the three people out there who actually listen to Off the Hook, you might recognize me. I'm not Kevin. And 
<laughs> and uh, I kind of came into the scene on Telefreak once they started getting their act together and got the conference together. And I was more when or less... When did that happen? <laughs> when did we get... <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, like, when did and, he show uh, up? I don't, I don't quite recall. I was kind of brought in as the guy who breaks everything. <laughs> And uh, yeah. especially GID software. Oh, man. I can't Bastard. name the number of times <laughs> I was banned from the conference for breaking yeah, all the like panels. At Wait. least a dozen times now, I yeah, swear. At least. He still doesn't have a big panel. Yeah, they took away my admin yeah. rights. Yeah, we took away his admin rights, yet he still gets us onto panels at Hope. So, who knows? <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah, actually, uh, Telefreak was launched at uh, Hope at, in 2004. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, it was, it was kind of like a combination of things that happened, but uh, essentially we came out here uh, to meet up because we had never met. And uh, I didn't know what Beaver even looked like. I didn't know what I looked like either. And so uh, we ended up like meeting up in the lobby and went to the conference and saw a bunch of great stuff, of course. And uh, been coming back ever since. Sorry to see it go. I have heard, though, that uh, technically the hotel pen is going to be around for years. Forever. <laughs> so whatever. So much for the last hope. They're ruining it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, the rodent. Uh, I go by Rat Man or whatever. I always have names like that. Um, let's see. I've known this guy for ever, for a long time. What, 10, 15 years, something like that? 10 years. Yeah. 10 years. So when they started up these projects, I mean, I'm involved in a bunch of things. Amateur radio, uh, support the uh, 2600 RSC network. And so when these guys started up this thing, I always tried to help out wherever I could, whether it was breaking their stuff or <laughs> offering some equipment or bandwidth or whatever, you know, whatever I can to help them out. So. Um, also, some of the fun things is I get to kick this guy when he gets out of control. I'm like a moderator, so I also <laughs> sit out there to encourage people to talk and use it and uh, encourage uh, intelligent conversation and then get rid of the non-intelligent conversation. So I help out in some of those respects with Telefreak and whatnot. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, Jay Falcon, you want to say anything real quick? Sure. So we can move on. Uh, I'm Jay Falcon. Um, you know, basically I found Telefreak, what, about eh, 2004, 2005. Um, <laughs> Mostly through uh, the Death Row Cluster, Telefreak, got involved with the community. That it's really become a community in there, yeah, in, nice. in our IRC channel and and places like that. But even more so on the teleconference because you talk. I mean, you can talk to these people. I mean, most people just sit there and they type, and you got instant messenger, you have IRC and all that. But you never get to hear the voice. Yeah, you don't and get any I, depth until you talk to them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, back in back in the day when I was freaking, you know, when you know, post inter or pre-internet, I guess. Yeah. Um, they were, you know, we had two Alliance teleconferences, and we would call 0700 numbers or 1700 numbers all the time, and I was in there with, like, Vax Buster and um, Rogue Agent, all these people, and Telefreak sort of brought some of that back because, you know, you can develop that community again and, you know, really have a good time doing it. And, you know, so I got more involved with the community, started, uh, you know, I'm, you know, with Sleestack and Beav, you know, we both, uh, we both have our interests in older computers, older systems, you know, the VMS system, X25, with Rodent, there's uh, um, radios, of course, and, you know, he's, he's been around the block a few times, you know, and then, uh, you know, the rest of the, you know, the rest of it just sort of all came together, and, you know, like, much like Rodent, I'm sort of a fill-in guy. You know, we, do, we all have our strengths and, you know, we'll draw from different backgrounds, but all comes to one. And just like uh, we have Project Telefreak now, you know, it, you know, just really kind of pulled it out of hat at the last second. <laughs> yeah, one, one time or another, too, and most of the time, uh, none of us uh, really live anywhere near each other. No. Other than uh, these two guys, yeah. but that's yeah, and the only means new, of communication so. was oh, like that, that's only in recent times. Yeah, uh, I'm good. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm generally the asshole that tends to kick people off of IRC and uh, and off the panel. On the and anybody who tends to be a general nuisance. Uh, I'm responsible for writing about 90% of the software that you see on Telefreak, aside from Asterisk itself, which Digium has done an awesome job on. But if you uh, so. <laughs> these guys are. They came up with a really cool system really early on. I got a chance to be a part of it back in 2003. I had just graduated high school, and I was just kind of playing around with asterisks, just uh, tinkering with VoIP. Came across 2600 net, just kind of played around with that. And Rodent introduced me to Sleestack and Beav at, uh, actually, I don't think he introduced me to Beav at the following DEF CON, but two DEF CONs later, I met Beav. 
but uh, I'm from the West Coast, and I generally attend DEF CON. I'm not really a New York side. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a really interesting ride so far. And, and really you, used, you used to call in very early on and hang out with oh, uh, yeah, like Tron. I used to hang on for <laughs> hours would hang out hours. and have a good old time. And we were all like, I remember so you listen to Tron endlessly, dude. Yeah, like <laughs> I'm one of few diapers. people who are still in the conference world who actually know of Tron. Whom Fortunately, he's still in jail. I Is checked. that officialized no, yet? Yeah. Like I know that I know that his release Bureau date is sometime this December. month, but if anybody can verify this for me, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you feel like you're in danger or something? Or? Well, you Siddle know that guy's you. pretty spooky. You know, I've All kicked right. him off of yeah. maybe two dozen payphones and yeah, he's, he's used to that, though. Well, so. this is this is why we have the world's only hacker dog. <laughs> That's Sid. He specializes in packet sniffing and intrusion detection, and uh, he does do authentication once you've been packet sniffed. So and, nice. And <laughs> Nice. So he takes care of it, you know. And Rodent sent me a great picture of Sid rack mounted on <laughs> a 19 inch rack. He has 19 like inch it. and 23 inch convertible rails. <laughs> um, he's pretty versatile. He works on pretty much anything. So, you guys That's mind if I give a little background on what we're doing right now? Yeah, yeah go for I it. Think we should go ahead and do right. that. Yeah, you can probably explain it better than I can. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. You know, I'll do we'll my see. best. Yeah. I, I can probably do more technical, but you can give the broader stroke. Right on. Well, uh, just go back to the original intention of uh, Telefreak in the first place for me. Robots personally. having sex. <laughs> well, that was, you know, early. But <laughs> the original intention behind the voicemail system was where really where it started was uh, to kind of develop a uh, Swiss bank account for voicemail where um, we don't know who you are and we don't want to know. And, uh, you know, people have criticized that a little bit here and there, not too heavily, but a little bit. Um, just being like something that you know terrorists might use or whatever. And, well, fear uh, the people that fear your privacy. Well, the thing is, is that you know the terrorists use AT and T's networks all the time, so I don't really see what the, what the point is. Mm. You know, <laughs> whatever you think a terrorist is. You know, so. so anyways, the, the, the whole idea was an anonymity, right? Yes. And uh, so anyhow, we're we're extending that idea here, and also one other part of it, which is essentially Telefreak is built out of uh, used and acquired machinery. Beave uh, donates the bandwidth because he's got it mm -hmm. and uh, also the electricity as well and a lot of expertise of course. Um, and then we all donate our time and energy and ideas. So um, this project here at Hope uh, this year is similar and uh, you know, we tried to work on it here and there uh, before we got here, but essentially we all kind of knew it was going to happen last second because no matter how well you plan something, it just doesn't necessarily go that way, although mm -hmm. the effect can be the same. Right. So uh, when we got here, we actually uh, started working on it here and there. I waited for the network to come up. and Several times. Several times, which is, you know, it's working awesome now. Those guys are dynamite. Yeah, good job. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much if you're out Rocks there. But, uh, the, the knock guys. Yeah. Yeah. Knock's awesome. Hit here. man. Yeah. So uh, anyhow, um, basically everything that's built here at the conference that you can use at your leisure um, is made out of garbage. <laughs> and I mean that. Well, it's actually the, used. Except the server I got in Dallas. I mean, that's. <laughs> right. No, totally. I mean, everything on site that we set up here is. You know, recycled telephones. It is. It's all recycled. Recycled phones. Yeah. It's all used phones. or given to us or just happened upon it or whatever. Uh, even the Ethernet cables, which we had to replace quite a few of. So some of those are new. But anyhow, the whole, the whole theory behind it was just to create something fun and useful for the conference. And uh, so I'm hoping that we actually are achieving that in On some a small part. So. Yeah, if you guys think of any features and whatnot, we can always get this guy to code it. Yeah, give us your ideas. <laughs> we'll do them. We'll try to do them. Yeah, yeah just don't yeah. point at me. Yeah, basically, <laughs> I'm, the, uh, I'm the weirdo who just kind of sits there, takes up your ideas, and kind of makes them work. And then we, you, you ship them back to us, and then we break them. Yeah, and then you break it, and then I bitch and drink more beer and throw beer bottles we at you. We send you beer, dude. <laughs> but. Well, essentially, um, it's split up into two separate servers. We have a server here locally, here at the NOC, for services like outbound dialing, uh, international dialing, whatnot. Um, and then we're also kind of starting to integrate some little games and some little funness into it so that, uh, for instance, like we have uh, just at the local server here, um, if you can just tell the system, just dial something interesting. And you might get a Virgin Airlines uh, mobile phone where, you know, it calls up and says, we're connecting you to the aircraft now. <laughs> or, you know, you might get... Uh, uh, Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower, oh yeah, Eiffel Tower pay phones. Yes. And so we have a whole list and randomly picks out. So even if you don't know, 
anybody you want to call. Just let the system decide to do it for you. You will and be then talking you to might someone. Be find yourself surprised and be like, wow, that's really silly. Or mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, yeah. let me clarify how you dial that right now, too. Because okay. essentially, the way the, the features are going to work throughout the conference is you dial 9 if you want a feature. Or you just dial out. So you can dial 0, 1, 1, or 1 and your number. And it'll just call whomever you're dialing. Right, 0, 1, 1, <laughs> international. Yeah, if anyone's Sorry, more yeah. dialed the, uh, the elevator, elevator system, we could link that into Asterix. So you Jay can talk to people in the elevators, you know. <laughs> people are getting yeah. stuck in them, so you will get the chance yeah, to don't talk. We, uh, yeah, don't we still have a bunch of old elevators from New York? Elevator relief is cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so anyhow, if you guys have any questions, too, uh, feel free to ask them anytime you want, yeah. like even now. Now, this side. whole system here, like, There's we literally right started putting it together two days ago here, right? Here. No, it was... Uh, really yeah. last night, actually. Last night, really, yeah. yeah. So more, more about yeah. maybe 3 o'clock in the morning or so. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah, no, not, not except yeah. for the ITU. Now. Well, mm. technically we're not an internet service provider and we're not providing actual pay for service or so we don't have services. to live up to any obligations of anybody as we're classified as a hobbyist service so being as that we're just playing around we're technically in the free and clear for the moment and interesting enough we have caught uh, on we used to have a lot of different conference numbers like you know we set it up insanely kind of ridiculous, but like people who are interested in electronics go to this one room, and then we realize, you know, if you're interested in Linux, go to this one room, and it was kind of stupid, so we kind of put it back to just a couple of general conferences. Mm -hmm. And we noticed one day that uh, some people were on the conference. Uh, what were they doing there, Gid? <laughs> uh, or do we something, even something about Western Union credit card numbers? Yeah, some kind. and we quickly took care of that. Yeah. But um, so basically, we didn't drop their docs. We didn't reveal no. them to the feds. We didn't do anything stupid like that. What we did, we simply but, just banned them from our system. But the point is, like the voicemail thing. Actually, we don't know what most of it's used for. And mm -hmm. you know, some of the criticisms that I've heard is like, you know. Well, what if drug dealers are using it? I'm kind of like, yeah, and so or citizens too. <laughs> they don't they don't get free service. <laughs> yeah. yeah, drug deal dealers need a voicemail as well. Yeah, actually, I guess what we're saying essentially dealers is that need voicemail too. We we can get in trouble for anything these days. I mean, there's really no way to follow all seven and a half million laws across the states and the feds and all that. I'm not really sure if that's humanly possible. I'm sure you could look it up if you spent the rest of your life doing just that or something like that. But uh, um, we, we're not breaking the law, man. We're we're offering a service. Really it's can't. free. Really. However you <laughs> use it is your business. So. Yeah, yeah we're not interested in, in. I wasn't saying that you were breaking the law, but I was saying that if they, let's say, did an investigation and they let them see your service, you know, could they just come and say we want all the voicemail? We don't have any logs of any of that. So. Yeah. We don't, and they could do that. Because they can do whatever they want. <laughs> yeah. Now, Telefreak itself does not actually log any call detail reports. We do not actually the parse our own CDR the records mail. on the conference or no, on the, we don't on the public to, PBX. No. <laughs> Basically, what you can do is you can essentially uh, ban the caller ID number or name of any given person through the blacklist function in Asterisk. And keep in mind, these guys are complete tools. Oh yeah, yeah, like so. I, I that's yeah, one guy, one guy, hard one guy was practicing his rap on the bridge one day. Oh yeah, he was doing that. Yeah. He was rapping on the bridge. We listened to it for a little while. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> he was terrible. Yeah. yeah. Could someone who has an asterisk server on their side yeah. also find their call there? Yes. And that sure, has right. been a trouble of ours in the past, but uh, through network means, for instance, IP tables, we can literally just drop their IP address. So at that point, you just have to re-up your IP address. And for most people, that's more of a pain in the butt to reset your cable modem than to. They get, they get bored and move along. So It also yeah. takes a little bit of diligence just to uh, keep also, moderating the conferences, because then when they come back once or twice and there's still someone kicking them out, then they're like, mm -hmm. all right, they yeah, right also, also we up. found ways of annoying people who annoy us too. So <laughs> very uh, easily. Uh, you should tell them about the um, uh, the different ways that we can transfer people. Yeah, uh, we we have a number of different uh, extensions, so we call them that we can 
toss people if we don't like them, for instance. The Tool, uh, 42 and 6. Uh, 46 and 2. 46 and 2. Nah, just a stupid song of mine. I have an old RIAA recording of basically somebody prank calling the RIAA. Uh, banana now, phone. There's the banana one? phone. Ravi's banana phone. Of course. Now, the one that I always wanted to do was get like me, you, and Slee stack on there and just record a conversation with us <laughs> so that whenever we transfer them off the conference, they yeah. still think they're on the conference. So if somebody's like sitting there toning there the conference us. for like a few hours straight. We did that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. We actually didn't do a recording, but it was just like the conference. And it back, uh, basically based on caller ID. Right. And basically the <laughs> idea is that they'll think they're still toning the conference when in actuality they're like, ah, I'm getting those in, guys. In reality, they're and just talking they're, to themselves. They're toning a black yeah. room full of nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Huh? Yeah. Well, we, well, we mute no, people all the time. But, um, yeah, muting works well. Oh, they yeah, don't actually, know. yeah, I see yeah, what you're Muting yeah, yeah. tends to be more of a first-time offense. Like, if you're just, like, echoing, for instance, a lot of people call in through uh, VoIP phones for the first time through their computers, and they'll just automatically, like, just have a speakerphone and a pair of... Uh, and a pair of speakers just set up, and oftentimes they just create a nice echo, echo. on the conference. Yeah, there's lots of ways that you can get on the system, either via DID or direct by IP address, yeah. via IAX or SIP. And so a lot of people are experimenting with it. They're like, ooh, voice over IP, and they Google, and eventually mm -hmm. they'll find Telefreak. And so we get them on there a lot of times, and so they get like me and Gid going, shut the fuck up, dude. Don't you know how to do <laughs> VoIP? Like, yeah, but uh, for the most part, it's fairly straightforward to uh, to connect to the bridge. Literally, just through what's called a DID or a direct inward dial. Uh, it's essentially just a regular telephone number that connects directly to the box. Another way is through the gateway, which is essentially a third ser or third party service provider, whom we then uh, have like an extra extension or number on off of their box. Another way is internationally. Uh, once again, through DIDs or gateways, and the fourth and final way is through directly into the box over VoIP itself. Uh, we currently support both SIP and IAX clients, and uh, yeah, it's it's pretty nifty. Anyway, well, the uh, go on. So we have a local server here that we're doing stuff, and we plan to set up some games and stuff like that. And we have a server hosted externally because. We weren't 100% sure on how well the bandwidth was going to work here. But well, we knew it would be shitty. I mean. Actually, it's been working <laughs> amazingly. It's been amazing. working great. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know how much throughput you're getting out of it. But oh, you mean on your it. box? No, on oh, the box here. Oh, that's crap. So we have a, an external box so we can have people around the world dial into and you know, either talk in the conference, either talk to people on the phones downstairs. We've set it up so that... Uh, um, people can around the world dial in and just ring our phones and people kind of get confused and pick it up and then they're talking to some jerk in Australia or New Zealand or something like that. So, um, Are you mean Ken? Ken Page. Yes, I do mean yeah. Ken. Um, <laughs> He's the permanent <laughs> resident of the conference. Um, and that's pretty much how it works uh, between the setup. And we're adding in more features. We're a little bit behind and very, very tired. Um, yeah, but Coffee and beer. Yeah, has been pretty much our diet for. Well, they can they can bring it. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Funnest thing for me so far is the uh, the ATAs that we're using actually allow us to use uh, pulse dial telephones uh, without any extra stuff going on. They do um, the they convert the pulse to the DTMF needed. Yeah. Or did you ever figure Which out how to do star and pound? No. Does anybody know how to uh, use a, a pulse dial phone dial phone to uh, dial star or pound? Anybody know? I thought it or was can like it be done? or 1-1 one one real quick. But it's 1-1. One one. Is it 1-1? One one? I, I, I tried that. Yeah, I'm going to try it again. I, it's totally possible, yeah. Right, right. Huh. Oh, did you try to just do 9 and then try to dial a phone number after you dialed 9? Right. Um, what was one? Um, no, oh, actually, like, one. It, one is the uh, call um, something, something interesting. interesting. Yeah. 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 No, actually, here and there uh, throughout the day today, uh, we've been kind of troubleshooting things and kind of, you know, you might have picked up a phone that was being worked on or, you know. Yeah, I was redoing all those cables. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, actually, a lot of the Ethernet cables we had to work with weren't very cool. So yeah, we've made them. Once yeah. again, like, we only started 
really putting together the IVR yesterday. So yeah, totally. most most everything that you're seeing on there is the result of the last 24 hours of. Well, it's on the fly and for what we need. I mean, we're building yeah. the features for what people are asking for. Yeah, what it's, we've been thinking it's entirely cool the result here. of our yeah. last minute procrastinations. Well, if you guys if you guys have any of your own phones too, feel free to come up and uh, we got a couple extra ATAs and we'll even unplug something that's already there and uh, you can try it out and mess around and stuff. Um, or if you have a feature set or anything like that, uh, you know, let us know. Uh, if you make an international call from here, do they get charged for... Nothing. 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 No, it's, it's all free. Only, no. yeah, the, they would only be charged for if their service provider would charge them for an inbound call. Okay. Basically, we're, we're not collecting any rates on these, and we're actually paying out of pocket for, uh, for this service. Actually, be approximately how much money have we spent today? <laughs> Um, today, uh, I looked at it. We have spent, uh, I think it's about six dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> you guys need to make more so, calls. <laughs> yeah, oh, so we, we need a lot more calls. Couple hundred bucks or something. Like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So come on, guys, <laughs> call <laughs> someone international. Go call them. Yeah. yeah. Like With our cheap American <laughs> dollar. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. It's no, like be an American. literally, like. The bandwidth is graciously donated from Beef and his work. Oh, and actually wrote it too. And Roden. Yeah. And yeah, the uh, box for Telefreak, we got that from uh, from a co-location in Dallas, and that's through Teal Networks. Yeah. Now, the DIDs are actually oftentimes free for us as inbound providers, as uh, Celex tend to make money off of long-distance charges to those DIDs. So we actually don't pay a cent for it. In exchange, your regular phone companies are already making the rates just through normal service. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna pull up some inbound tomorrow, big time. For sure. Sure. No. And they just yeah. offer just a, a DID that goes via SIP yeah. or IAX to yeah, sure. wherever you point it. So mm -hmm. we point it to the telefree asterisk box. And literally, all that that does it just takes a regular phone number and sends it into a VoIP protocol, yeah. and we just pick it up wherever we have our asterisk box hosted. And we're also using SIP broker which gives us uh, a lot of international inbound, like all over the world. If you're sitting in Argentina, mm -hmm. you can dial in and whatnot. That's a local. Yeah. So what did you say you guys did that uh, was advantageous for the DID? Uh, we signed up for their service. Terminate their <laughs> calls? No, the, company, the companies, they make money off the yeah. inbound termination, either via tariffs or, or via long distance termination. So we yeah. get the DID for free inbound. Yeah, um, for so instance, we don't make any outbound uh, calls with it, and so the CLEC that offers the DID, they make like chump change off of it mm -hmm. by giving us free inbound. So if I wanted to say pick up the phone number, you could pick up at one DID and point it to wherever you wanted via SIP or IAX mm -hmm. and do just that. Yeah, you can literally get a free VoIP telephone number just by signing up for free a inbound. service like. Uh, so what uh, One of them is called IP you, call. If you IP take a call, look, uh, SIP broker, uh, IX tell. If you take a look at the web page that I have displayed right now, it's our DID access page. And on that page, we actually say who our provider for each one of these DIDs is. Uh, SIP numbers, just one that I recently found. There's Stanophone, there's IP call. So, I mean. I don't think Stanophone's accepting new. Stanophone, inbound. Stanophone, Actually, we just got a a Stanophone number tonight. Cut them uh, did down. they set it back up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the one we, don't, we have. Uh, we have a telephone number specifically for the conference oh, so that it makes the, ring, the phones ring. Give it out to your friend. Say, hey, I'm standing next to the phone. <sighs> Boom. Or whatever. Give conference. it to a pizza delivery guy. Put on the street. Yeah, maybe get yeah, some interesting it's calls. It's nice for anonymizing yourself, for instance. You know, if, yeah, uh, if you don't want to give out your cell phone number to hope attendees, it's probably a good idea to just forward it all through your asterisk box through one of these free DIDs. Mm -hmm. um, just right. to jump in for a second, since you all know how we uh, can abuse our callers and all of our problems we've been having, we've kind of jumped over one of the most important aspects of the actual project, and that is the conference itself. In, in essence, it really brings back the old school free community. And a perfect example of that is in China when the Great Firewall went up, we had callers coming from all over China calling into the conference and talking to us about things that were not being reported in the you know, major media outlets. We were the first to know, you know because people found their way around the firewall to call mm -hmm. our conference, you know, yeah, beating I, their I own system. And that, in essence, is really what Project Telefreak is about. Is I, that 
I think that Telefreak kind of embodies a libertarian idea of being able to have free speech no matter where you are in the world. So despite being in America, being in a foreign country, so long as you have internet access or telephone access, you can share your opinion or hear the opinions of others. I, I think that is a really important thing that a lot of people tend to overlook in Telefreak. We want everyone to be able to use it. We want it to be free. And we're not interested Most in pushing of all, our politics fun. on anyone else. I mean, that, else, that's so. what it's all about, you know, just having a bunch of guys just sit around drinking beers all night on the conference, just, just well, shooting shit. Well, beer all yeah. night. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I, do, I, don't. I do, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, like, it, it, it can be pretty fun. Like, I've come up with some really creative stuff just by sitting around talking with Sleestack on the phone. Yeah, beer know? makes me smarter, man. It's weird. <laughs> well, it <laughs> I don't know. It's like a vitamin or something. It helps slow down the brain a little bit. Yeah, helps maybe. You focus. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Any ab any other questions at all? One in the back. Do you, do you guys have any actual CSPN lines? Uh, yes. We used to. Oh, yeah, yeah, actually, no, we yeah. used to. Um, yeah, we used to have. No, that one. I had to kill that one when we moved that office. Well, then I'll get some up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we used to have some up, but you know, through maintenance and the, just the changes of topology and time, you know, w I thought we had some up, but yeah, it's we, possible we, we can do that and do like free centers. inbound on it, but. I'm well, sorry. well, why not? You know, it's just you know, use that type of equipment. You know, not a lot of people are doing it anymore, and so you have it. Like we got the junk laying around. It's like, hey, I got a DID with a phone line. Hey, I'll plug it in. Tell free. Well, there's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, there's there's one other service out there too that's loosely connected with free world dial up. That's uh, I was trying to remember the name of it. I I know what it does, but. Uh, FD, FD, F FWD, FWD out. out. That's yeah. the name of it. I, I actually, I think they shut that down. Yeah. No, it's still around, man. Uh, I think they changed names, didn't they? I was just there the other day. So, oh, well, anyhow, um, that service. If you have, if you have a uh, free line, know. you can share it using asterisk, and uh, essentially a queue credit, you know, a crew credits over a period of time. And for like, I think it's for every call that passes through your line. Uh, you get 10 credits, and uh, you can dial anywhere that their dial plan will work in, and that's everywhere. It's it's a large list. Sort of like sort of like torrent for uh, telephone calls. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, it's really fun. It's it's really fun to back spoof people too on that because yeah. actually that was the first thing I did with it was call out and then to my own cell phone, of course, and see who I was using, who what, you know where the line was and stuff. And so I called them up. I was like, Wow, dude, you you like asterisks? That's kind of cool, man. You're like pretty close <laughs> to me and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I love it, man, but I can't get a job doing it, so what are you yeah, guys doing? Yeah, you know? It yeah. was cool. So. Yeah, there isn't a lot of work out there for VoIP these days. Yeah, it's kind of saturated, but yeah. it's fun. Mostly in India. <laughs> Good hobby. Cute. So, uh, um, on the CAM project website, there's a picture that's been up for months now that says asterisk radio boxes. <sighs> oh, that's Ken's page. <laughs> okay. Is that Ken's? Yeah. I yeah. think I know what he's talking Cam about. Cam Project. So, I, so my question would be, what are those? And then my second question would be, I know you're really into radio. Have you incorporated your radio stuff into trying to connect them to the telecast? All right. Well, the first question, uh, Gid, a while ago, wrote a project all freehand with PHP and just, you know, his goodness um, called camproject.net. And it lets people just um, set up a, a cam, you know, and it uploads via FTP. And it's just for, you know, cam and it's easy, whatever. Yeah. Um, so there's a picture up there, and Ken, one of our permanent residences on the conference from from Australia. Usually from Australia. Yeah. Ken's brilliant, by it, the way. Is it the bottom one right there? Yeah, he's yeah he's down here at the bottom. He he's the only guy who just doesn't update Asterisk. his picture at all. Okay, I think I know what it is, and um, there's some modules that come with Asterix if you compile all the add-ons and stuff like that, and it's an Asterix to radio interface, kind of like IRLP.net um, for ham radio as well as um, Gosh, there's a couple of them. Echo Stink, I'm sorry, Echo Link. Um, <laughs> that one's bad. <laughs> Don't use it. Uh, but um, there's also stuff for Asterix to merge uh, radio and Asterix. Um, and it's a nice way to do it, but no one's really capitalized on it. Probably because it's poorly documented and the hardware isn't easy to put together. So, you know, ham operators, and they may be smart, but they still got to, like, pull oh, stuff. It requires a T1 Ken is really do-it-yourself, too, and he likes to do yeah. things his own way. And um, so, I, yeah, I met him a long time ago and took forever, but I, I finally sent him a card so he could try some stuff or whatever. And it's just a TDM card with two ports, you know. And then he buys um, days. <laughs> what's that? And then he buys days. Yeah. 
<laughs> so and then your second question was if I've done any of that stuff. Um, I've looked at it a lot and been kind of waiting for it to develop and mature a little bit more. Um, I've done a lot of radio to uh, voice over IP interfaces with IRLP, but I haven't done it with asterisks. I'd really like to because the functionality is like endless. It's pretty awesome. Um, no, it's it's two way with IRLP. Yeah, and so like you can either do it from like asterisk to asterisk, or from phone to radio, or radio to radio with asterisks in the middle. I mean, the possibilities are endless with it. So um, I haven't done it yet, but I've been looking for the code base to develop a little bit more and get a little more documentation out of it. Yeah, um, I just don't have the time to really fuck with it. But now um, the thing about asterisk is that it's a very malleable piece of software that's out yeah, there. Yeah, if you have the time, you can pretty much really. Make you it can do anything. you can I literally do call it star. I mean, you asterisk. can literally do anything by interfacing a telephone to a computer, basically. Yeah, you can even wipe out a server with it. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I've met people who have built animatronic robots that interface through asterisk. I've met people who have shut, I don't know, who have built uh, little options to like turn off and on lights in their home just by calling their home phone number. Yeah, we, we used to have some stuff, like maybe some of it's still up, but yeah. like scanners plugged in, you, you can yeah. call anywhere from yeah. Telefreak. Yeah, into like Telefreak you can listen, and to listen to radio like scanners LAX, right off of Telefreak LAPD itself. And, right. Yeah. Do you want to say something? Yeah, yeah. actually, you can even uh, listen to WBAI. Yeah, we, yeah. Uh, yeah. we even have uh, live radio streams right through Asterisk off of our main PBX. Absolutely. Yeah, it actually gives you a, a direct interface to spot any language on the system that you're yep. using as well through the AGI or actually straight through system, system calls yeah. and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, Pretty through cool. either the AGI interface or through the manager interface, you're able to literally control asterisk or have asterisk control something for you, which is pretty cool. And the beautiful thing about asterisk, you know, it's all open source. I mean, we've been free to modify it, fuck with it as much as we like and just put it out there. Uh, we do put our source code up on telefreak.org slash code if uh, anybody ever wants to check it out. That's what this page looks like here. It's fairly straightforward. Literally, we, whenever we write some little stupid script or modify another script, we literally just throw that piece of code up there on Telefreak. Uh, at the moment, I'm actually working on a couple of little panels, which uh, I'll probably be publishing right after Hope this year. Uh, basically, real straightforward. It just allows you to see all active channels on a current PBX. Like, for instance, this guy here from the 270 <coughs> is called into our box, wherever he is. But we're able to see that this guy's coming in through Kentucky, and we can find out all the information on his service provider and all that stuff without really needing to do anything funky. Like One thing is... Like when we're using just the normal Telefreak system, we don't give out anyone's caller ID or anything like that. There's only a few people who have access to the administrator functions of this, and that's like me, Beave, and Gid, and Slustack. Yeah. And right, and keep in mind we don't actually keep it logged. It's just not during logged, that current, it's only on the fly. That current session. Mm -hmm. So it, whenever you're connected up, as soon as you hang yeah. up, I mean it's not getting done. Really, the logging. really the only information that's ever logged is who's in the blacklist file. <laughs> right. And in reality, like if they're in that file and the feds come to bust us down. I'd prefer them to get busted too. So, <laughs> you know, they're, they're in there for a point. <laughs> so, a couple things that we do uh, work on together is uh, me and Git are on the, the usual Suspects Radio. We do a small little radio show every Friday, and um, you know, we talk about sports for an hour. We're not big on sports, but our other co-hosts are. And then we talk about technology and security and politics for the latter half of the hour. And so, a lot of people listen to it via the archive, but we're also uh, broadcast live on the internet easily with Shoutcast, and then uh, Saturday morning we're out on the AM bands. Um, so that's a project me and Gid work on. Uh, yeah, KLAV 11. Yeah, we don't listen to it on the AM. KLAV 12:30 yeah. AM. And so we work on that Nevada. project together, and so we always troll people and talk about whatever's on our mind on the yeah, air. Yeah, whenever so. we're bored and just feeling like shooting the breeze. I mean, yeah. we show up every Friday at a yeah open mic shop night. Anyone's part. welcome to call in or uh, come troll us on the radio as well. Yeah. So and it goes both ways. The other thing that uh, we work together on is Beav and I host uh, the IRC network for uh, 2600. Mm -hmm. So, just um, loads of laughs. Yeah. Loads of laughs and fun. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, but that's all about community and just making it work. I mean, all right. of us work on that together uh, to keep our channels uh, chatting and uh, make it user friendly, I guess. Yeah, just try and keep out the bots. That's pretty much it. <laughs> and then I think uh, me and Jay Falcon, we do. Uh, actually, I, I wrote a piece of software called iWar. 
and Woo. I've gotten really interested in calling remote or calling other countries repeatedly <laughs> a lot. And yeah. we do. Uh, um, they want to be called. They really do. Oh, yes, we would say we exactly. would say like Iran loves getting on. Four o'clock in the right. morning. <laughs> Just talking about X twenty five. Yeah. Like, hey, do you remember Telnet, man? Yeah, yeah. Like actually, earlier, today, actually, earlier today, earlier today, I was sitting like, in I the booth what other up in Telefreak, was. and Jay Falcon over here had his laptop word dialing China. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> like, what the hell, man? <laughs> <laughs> hey, they need. You they got need love there, yeah. Well, you know, it's tit for tat, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, Beeb wrote a really awesome piece of software called iWar, which uh, I'm happy that we're actually posting uh, and hosting that source code on Telefreak. Yeah, uh, and he's actually... He's chosen to associate it with Telefreak. is really awesome. I, I found a great document from uh, the uh, Department of <laughs> Homeland Security just recently, and it was an article uh, from their, was it cybersecurity, whatever it was. <laughs> Cyber there, it was about securing modems, and they said the top one of the top utilities, the first one they mentioned was iWar. I was like, yes, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Put that on your resume, B. <laughs> oh, it's, it's totally going to be on there. <laughs> And it's free, right? Yes. Homeland Security yes. Bulletin, August 2007. <laughs> As you can tell, we're kind of a versatile group of developers. I mean, we're talking about asterisks, we're talking about tons of different foam-related programs. We're, we more or less have a very short attention span, so... As you can tell, we're all seem to be working on different projects at the same time, but at the same, you know, collaborating on the conference itself to bring it all together in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this entire conference, everything that you're going to experience in the Telefreak booth will uh, literally have been made up on the fly. Like n almost none of this stuff was pre-planned. Like we literally showed up the day before and said, "Hey, let's just start let's putting do it some all together." We literally got on the like conference. The, the only and said, the only pre-planning was like, "Okay, yeah, we're going to be buying this equipment." I think you planned enough to crack. No, I think beer. that we like bought a like few hundred T-shirts or something like that. Is that yeah, we right? have some T-shirts. So if you want to be all telephonic with us, you can <laughs> buy yeah. those. We're we're go we're not like we're making money on those. We're actually going in the hole on those. So just buy yeah. Them. And there, there were some <laughs> shot glasses way back when, but I think those are going to be uh, kind of a collector's item for the elite few of Telefreak. <laughs> Yeah, we're looking for ideas for uh, contesting, too, because tomorrow we're going to focus yeah. a bit on uh, inbound and contesting. Yeah, this is entirely based off of ideas. Like, it's yeah. all last-minute changes. Yeah, we're going to give points for uh, the most amount of contacts made versus how long the contacts were and that sort of thing. Maybe the longest call, or not like time, but like no, distance. No, do the, I think the DTMF thing is a better idea. Yeah, it's, that would be like uh, random digits generated over, you know, an For interval. DTMF and here identify them and... Yeah. Right. I thought yeah. that was the whole idea. Yeah, can anyone read DTMF by ear? I can, for the most part. We'll have a contest for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're ready to drink when and, you're done. And how many, <laughs> and uh, when you how many digits can you enough, remember? You kind of get yeah. used to the sound of it, I suppose, you know. That's a cool sound of it. Yeah, you can kind of pick up DTMF if you yeah. really listen for it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Telefreak Simon says, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything we could learn by looking at your extensions.com for your search bar for like No, that's that would be kind of private. Uh, I think yeah. Beeve has like a weird AGI going down right now. But sure, we're always willing to share any of the knowledge or any of the experience yeah. that we have, and that's what we do. Yeah, with like each most other. of that stuff you'll probably actually more than likely, you'll probably see uh, like the source code of everything that we've done here, like any software that we've written just for the Hope project so far, anything like that. We'll probably be posting pretty soon. And the re reason why I say that is because just by the nature of the configs of Asterix right. and the way that it's set up, right. there's we a lot like of admin information in there that's stuff. confidential. But oh, yeah. But the special you know, ways if that there's like an exploit for one of my panels, I, mean, I don't that. exactly want to release it during the middle of the conference when everybody's using it. So... I mean, it's probably a good idea to hold off on that until after. Yeah, it always helps to look at a clean extensions file without any of the original comment code in it. Yeah, plus, you know, we'll talk about it all day, man. You can oh, yeah, come like upstairs and talk oh, yeah, about like phones. A, I'll, I'll bitch all about that Digium stuff all day long. As you want. That's uh, what we have. I mean, we've got our own bridge. Anyone can call us and we'll just talk with you. So, But we <laughs> keep this, though, in mind. We've had, like, a bajillion people call us who, like, 
just set up asterisks. And well, so <laughs> not like we're like, RTFM, motherfucker. <laughs> but, yeah. but the simple stuff, yeah, we'll be like, hey, just go look at that. And <laughs> yeah, like we're, we're always interested in helping out as best we can, but only to an extent where <laughs> it doesn't involve do too much you. time. Yeah, like <laughs> Ken, I mean, he has a lot of great ideas, and he's very innovative and whatnot. But a lot of times um, if he's new to something, he'll just try to get you to do it for him. Yeah, and, and we don't play that game no. very well. And yeah, we don't like to yeah. play that game. Call me the clown, don't play yeah, that. Yeah, Ken's gonna hate our guts after this. Game. <laughs> <laughs> he's never. Well, gonna he's call actually like again. updating one of his cameras now on Cam Project. It appears. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was thinking about updating my cam while I was up here. Yeah. But By the way, CamProject.net is just like a little thing I've just been tinkering with building for a while now, and uh, it's gonna just get another project that. Yeah, like I don't already have like twelve dozen of them already. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to make a comment actually on the software that you're displaying there to you, the manage, management panel, is yeah, that like what you call it? I haven't even shown you guys this yet, have I? The new yeah. one, right? Well, yeah. um, that, that is not publicly accessible in any yeah, way, shape, or form, just so uh, everyone knows. Actually, this one will be soon. I'm talking about in, in use. But it's, currently, it's yes, yes this, t yeah. this kind of item, actually, the specific one that I'm displaying now is actually a heavily, heavily stripped down copy of one that I had been working on for a while. Uh, basically, you'll see that I'm actually hiding the actual extension of every telephone number in this display. This is just so that some people have privacy who have called into our system. But uh, I will be publishing the original source code to this. But it is for administration is what I was stressing. It, it is for yeah. administration and basically anybody to be able to look through their logs. But yes, only administrators should have access to something of this good of statistics. Yeah, you want to lock that down nice and tight. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're really big about that. We don't want to give up anyone's privacy or their phone numbers. Um, even the assholes that call in who are trolling us on the conference and just, you know, screwing off or whatnot, we're not interested in dropping their, their DID or their caller ID mm -hmm. or whatnot. We'll ban them, we'll block well, them, we'll talk to Only if they're them. real assholes, we might drop <laughs> their... Yeah. But freedom of speech like, is big, you know. Still, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's big for us. It's well, big for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, maybe freedom if it's speech, the PLA, we'll drop all their dots. Freedom of but. speech and privacy. <laughs> no. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I think that privacy Never should kill just as much as freedom. In the back. I have not. No, uh, I haven't either. No. Yeah, I've, I've a lot tinkered, of those actually, I have a little I've tinkered bit. Tinkered with some uh, of the stuff of that's uh, involved in SIP, but that's been about it. Jay and Falcon. That has. goes back to like the. Well, yeah, I mean, I played a little. I've been trying to piece it all together. Uh, you know, the last few months. Yeah. It's, no, uh, you guys are giving really panel broken. tomorrow, right? <laughs> That's the thing. It's like there's the Asterix is a great software platform, but there's a lot of things that are still definitely work in progress. Mm -hmm. yeah, so sort of like that. Echo some translation. of those other protocols and codecs um, for the Cisco stuff is not complete. Like the skinny, the MCGP, and all that, um, it's not really usable. It's insecure, mm -hmm. and it's the, the also, feature set's not there. It's um, yeah, so a lot also, of that stuff you can't really use. Asterisk is constantly changing too. Yeah. Like 24 7, like every time you look around, asterisk has changed. But yeah, I've, uh, anyway, I've, I've they're, they're, they're signaling us to stop here, so we better finish up. I was talking to Slee Stack about this earlier, but I mean, it's not as bad nowadays, but I remember literally having a bug issue with uh, asterisk and then, you know, mm -hmm. saying, well, I'll just pull down the latest, you know, uh, subversion, you know, head or SV, or I think it was SV, or CVS. CVS, right. thank you. Uh, and then pulling that down and be like, oh, crap, that totally fixed that bug. Oh, wait, now there's two mm -hmm. fucking more bugs to deal with. <laughs> yeah. And just dealing with that all the time. And, yeah. you know, all I still see even that occasionally. And yeah, I've it's like a, a game of chess, man. Yeah. <laughs> I've awesome. done a lot of commercial installations for Asterix, you know, taking out old people, uh, old Nortel systems and replacing them with Asterix voice over IP systems. And I've had difficulties with their code, um, even their release stuff, where there's a, a little bug and I have to work with Digium. Um, and their open source people and their commercial people to get them to fix stuff. Because, um, I mean, their software's great, but there's still a lot of flaws that they mm -hmm. have to work out in commercial environments or to be extra stable and compatible. And, mm -hmm. you know. Is it superior to the other ones? Or is it like yeah, there, 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 there are other uh, open source PBX platforms that are out there, like Trixbox and. Uh, well, and Trixbox others. is based Free off Switch. Asterisk, actually. Yeah. 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 I'm not really fond of any of the other ones. But, um, the uh, only ones I've been able to use commercially um, and successfully just fooling around privately mm -hmm. in experimentation is Asterix. Yeah. Uh, the support's yeah. there, and it's constantly changing to get fixed and better. Yeah, uh, from, from anybody who can code from their standpoint, it is the most malleable operating, or the most malleable 
PBX that I've ever seen personally. And there's a ton of support for it there. Oh yeah. There's us on irc.2600.net, and then there's pound asterisk on Freenode, and um, thanks. Yep. <laughs> uh, so the, there's a lot the, of people chatting IRC about it and talking about it, and are out. willing to participate and give support for it. Um, and then you can also get commercial support for Asterix as well. So not to plug yeah. those guys. They don't need any money. We're actually uh, VYP-info.org also. Yeah. 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 It's been around for a really long time. My number one resource for any problem with Asterix. Has There's been a lot of great info. config examples and uh, lists of mm -hmm. uh, you know providers in terms of DIDs and ATAs and equipment and uh, outbound trunks, all that stuff. So. It is. It's true. Yeah. Although sometimes it comes back around too, though, because a lot of times things it seems like to me like fall off, and then you go back there. Like we were just talking about that earlier with something like uh, all of a sudden it's back. You know, it's it's weird. But yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. It, it does get outdated, and it is kind of like you know it's a wiki basically. So um, it's kind of community generated. You know, mm -hmm. it's good stuff still. Like and some of the old stuff actually kind of leads you to maybe solve a newer problem even. You know. Anything else? Anybody you want to ask? What's that? Which one of us does the VMS stuff? Right here. Yeah. <laughs> that be that weirdo on the end. <laughs> yeah, and I also do. Um, well, actually, me and Jay. Oh, we all do weird shit. Who's kidding? <laughs> we do. Um, um, we do the uh, VMS stuff, and me and Jay Falking are, are giving a talk tomorrow. Uh, it's going to have a lot to do with uh, X25 networks and using VoIP and connecting and using modems, and it's going to be, I think, Yeah, really are you going to be showing off iWar tomorrow by chance? Uh, briefly, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. I like mean. 90% of it, maybe, thereabout? Um, <laughs> just briefly. Just leave it war dialing the whole talk. <laughs> I think, yeah, we'll just have it on the screen. Just, yeah. you know, just go. What do you think? China, Pakistan? Iran. <laughs> no, I, I think that's a bad cool idea. stuff from Iran. No, actually, we weren't getting any we did good Iran. stuff from no. Iran. Oh, you're pulling all <laughs> the Unless stuff you call from Iran. Fax machine, oh, man. cool stuff. <laughs> I'm sure I could fax some fun stuff to Iran. <laughs> yes, that is correct. correct. Hacking International Network through VoIP. Yeah, and it's always it's fun to listen to the guys chat about it and talk about it. Yeah, oh, yeah, see, pretty much between us, me and Jay Falcon, like when we sit around, and we're talking about, hey man, what's a DNIC for, you know, uh, you know. Inet in India and everybody else is around us were like such dorks. They're like, what the hell are you guys talking about? We're like, God, you gotta try Yeah, this. if there's anything we'll that you're gonna take from Tafrik <laughs> if you ever join the conference is that there's generally some interesting conversation going on, even if not everybody is talking. Uh, you can generally it. get a couple of really weird people on there talking about some really interesting stuff. Right. Always. Tom. Tom. Cheap. Uh, yes, it is. Um, oh, man. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, it, it, well, if you're trying to like brute force say a pen to get uh, to dial out or whatnot, typically what people do, and I think uh, Jay Falcon, you can back me up on this, is you'll set up IWAR to just call the, the same phone number and repeatedly try pins and then try to dial out and get a carrier on the other side so that you'd have a way of knowing that the pin was correct or not. Basically, uh, what you'd have to do in uh, in iWar would be to like set up IAX2, so you can listen through your your headset, your your, I, your iPhone or whatever. Well, actually, I was thinking about yeah. through a modem in that way. Well, through, but now a the voicemail is response. That's the thing. <laughs> um, you well, of course, you could run iWar as many instances as you want. I mean, um, there. But yeah, that that shouldn't be a problem to do. I mean, no. but it, it's not threaded to speak that you could just start at one instance of iWar and have it spawn off 4,000 processes trying to do it. So you would have to, you know, throw it in the background and just make, I don't know, a script file to just go through and do it for you. Yeah, also, you guys can bug us on these questions tomorrow. Like, we're going to be here all week, right? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, you can get us on uh, 2600.net, the IRC mm -hmm. network, or just call into the bridge yeah, or just pound come by Telefreak the table. Yeah, pound on irc.2600.net. Yeah. Uh, head up telefreak.org if you just want to get in contact with us. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, get your free phone calls while you can get yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we got free plenty of money calls, in there for now. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs>
If you pay for it, yes. (laughs) (laughs) If you're going to sit at the table. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Make pretty towns. All right. Thank you. Well, it kind of looks like we might be done. Thank you very much. Thank you.